Stonehenge is one of the most important prehistoric sites in the world, but there are still many unanswered questions about its origins and use. Archaeologists continue to investigate the landscape around the stones to see what it can tell us about Stonehenge and the people who built it. A lot of people come to Stonehenge and look at the stones, look into the middle of the monument, but what we'd really like them to do is to look out into that landscape and walk in it to discover for themselves some of the monuments that were built around Stonehenge and some of the clues in the landscape about what it looked like in prehistory. The Stonehenge project has three major parts. Number one was opening our brand new visitor centre here. Number two was building and opening up these Neolithic houses to the public to show what Neolithic life was like. And lastly, we've got our landscaping works going on at the Stones. Hundreds of acres have been converted from arable farmland to grass. And there's no better way to appreciate the Stones than to see them in their wider natural setting. A walk through the landscape is perhaps one of the best ways to reveal some of the secrets of Stonehenge. Walking from the visitor centre to Stonehenge, we've got these interpretation panels scattered throughout the landscape. And by reading them and looking at the images, you'll find out much more about this area in prehistory. We're standing about a mile away from Stonehenge, and this huge expanse of grassland behind me is all part of the World Heritage Site, part of the Stonehenge landscape. And there are lots of humps and bumps in this landscape. They might not look like much, but these are actually barrows, round barrows. When they've been excavated, these burial mounds have been found to contain graves, often with really exotic um, grave goods. It seems that particularly on the ridges overlooking Stonehenge was a prime place to be buried. And there are actually about 300 round barrows like these in the Stonehenge landscape. Neolithic people would have used flint tools. This is before the time of metal. And this is a replica axe of the type that might have been used to carry out coppicing. Prehistoric people are incredibly resourceful and we know that they were managing woodland. It's quite a, quite a sharp edge and it's based on, on similar flint tools that have been found. It's been mounted into a wooden handle and secured using uh, a resin. It's actually a mixture of pine resin, beeswax and charcoal that creates this nice sticky substance to secure the axe securely in the handle. The axe would have been used at an angle to strike at the, the base of the tree in this sort of action. Well, sometimes it's the really small things that tell us huge amounts about prehistory. Archaeologists can use a technique whereby they look at land snails. These are snails that have been extracted from soil samples and sediments from in and around monuments. And when they're analysed, you can identify the different species of snails and work out what the landscape might have been like at the time they were living here. There's no better way to understand the Stonehenge landscape than by walking and exploring within it. But of course, the pinnacle to anyone's visit is coming to the stones themselves. And soon they'll be within a much more dignified setting. We've been able to remove the road from right next to the stones, reuniting Stonehenge with its processional avenue. And that's extraordinary and really special for us to be able to achieve because it makes Stonehenge sit within the landscape that it was designed to stand in.